Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Whole Museum's Pride in Our City podcast. I'm your host, Dan Bo, and over the next few weeks, you'll be hearing from some amazing local guests who are involved in this really exciting project. Pride in Our City started off as an online exhibition in 2020 during lockdown as a way to celebrate together, and we invited everyone to tell us what Pride means to them and what Pride means to you. And this year, we're expanding that, and it will become part of an artist-led, community-created exhibition that will be on display at the Ferrans Art Gallery. And some of the people you'll hear from over the next few weeks will be the organisers, the makers, the creators, and we hope that by having these talks, you'll be able to go on the journey with us as the exhibition starts to take shape and launches. It'll be a real, actual event, and we'd love to see you there of course, so you're definitely invited. Now today, we've got Lauren Field from Hull Museums, who was one of the instigators of the working group that looks at increasing access to LGBTQ plus stories through research and documentation and programming. And she helped launch the digital exhibition that was Pride in Our City, and is currently on the team that is taking it to the next phase. So over to you, Lauren. Hello, my name is Lauren Field. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the community curator for social history at Hull Museums. Basically, my role as a community curator is to engage with the community around Hull Museums. So everybody within our local area who uses our museums or who doesn't use our museums, to have conversations with them and to highlight gaps within our collections that, you know, we can have conversations with our local communities about what's missing, how we can change that and how we can make whole museums a more welcoming and engaging environment for everybody to enjoy. So having those honest and authentic conversations and providing that engagement and changing it really for the better. So that's something that we've been doing with Pride in Our City. In around 2019, we began acknowledging that within Hall Museums, there was a massive gap. We weren't representing the LGBTQ plus community of Hall. It was extremely underrepresented within our collections, our interpretation and our delivery. So we set out to change that. So by having conversations and, and actively engaging with people, Hopefully that's what we're doing with Pride in our city. And how do you think that's been going so far? I might be a little bit biased, <laughs> but really well, I think, because obviously we, we started this project and the first thing that we did was we had staff training. So we had service-wide staff training with Yorkshire Mesmac, who is a sexual health organisation located in Hull. They came in and they gave us LGBTQ plus and trans awareness training so that we were in a better position to have these conversations with our audience. And then obviously, unfortunately, COVID-19 hit and we were a little bit stuck. But with ongoing conversations with Yorkshire Mesmark and organisations like Pride in Hull and the Hull and East Riding LGBTQ plus forum, we were able to kind of identify that there was still a want there for engagement. So as Hull Museums started thinking really, what can we do? How can we facilitate that? And we started having these one-on-one -on -one conversations with people talking about their memories of Pride in Hull because unfortunately that event was cancelled as well and that led to us putting on a digital exhibition so one of Hull Museum's first digital exhibitions Pride in Our City and the response to that was overwhelmingly positive. I was a little bit nervous at the beginning, wondering if people would want to engage, considering with everything that was going on and would people have the means. We just put out a call for content, share our memories, your memories with us and your images and create some videos. And within two weeks, we were overwhelmed with the response. We had such a, a, a fantastic response and I think the exhibition is testament to that it, it's really a nice trip down memory lane for pride in hull and it really i think really brings the community together because we were all making this content at home and, and doing it you know i was doing it from my, my dining room table <laughs> So we're going to play a little clip of one of the videos that was made for Pride in Our City that can be found on YouTube with many people talking about their memories of Pride in Hull. And I was wondering if you could just tell us a little bit about 
what we might hear. Yeah, definitely. So we teamed up with Yorkshire Mesmac again. And in a lot of videos, you'll meet Craig. Craig worked with us to reach out to individuals and community groups within Hull to ask a few questions. So what does Pride in Hull mean to you? What's your favourite memory of attending a Pride in Hull event? But it also touches on some serious subjects like discrimination and homophobia and transphobia and things like that. So there was individuals involved as well as I say community groups. So one of the main community groups or I guess sports groups that got involved was the Roundheads. So they're an inclusive rugby team. They really got involved and created a lot of videos for us um, and they're all available to view on on the exhibition and on our YouTube page as well and they are really interesting to listen to you know as I say sometimes they are very joyful and, and happy memories are discussed but also you know one of the video talks about one of the members of the the team who received some homophobia while he was doing his shopping it's difficult hearing, but obviously, you know, it's it's important to have these conversations and talk about these things and understand why they're happening and how we can help support change. And, you know, we're very thankful for everybody who created a video and got involved for the exhibition. The one that I'm actually going to play for you right now is a conversation between Craig from Yorkshire Mesmac and also Heidi Victoria from Pride in Hull talking about memories of Pride. You've been to quite a few Prides in your lifetime. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your first Pride? I think I do. I think my first ever Pride, I was working. Um, I also work for the War on Youth Project and I think we had a stall. So my first experience, I was quite young and it was it was so big and so exciting and quite dramatic in parts and it was quite an experience. I think one of the earliest Prides I went to was when it was in West Park and I went with a couple of friends, took my dog with this little rainbow coat and it was just really nice and you see so many people that you know and it's it's quite nice seeing people and recognising that oh I didn't realise that you were part of this celebration and it it's just a really nice social atmosphere and I think since then I've just seen Pride get bigger and better and more exciting and it's just grown and grown which I think is great for our city. It really is and I think that's right year on year it surprises me that we get more people every year the event gets bigger, the parade gets bigger, and it's just a great thing to show, to see that growth, I think. I think one of the things that stood out for me, um, one of my first prides, and more recently, I saw quite a few parents wearing t-shirts saying, I love my gay son, I love my gay daughter, and that was quite emotional actually seeing that, and just seeing people that were there on their own to support people in their lives, I think that means a lot and I think that's that's something that really stuck with me a little bit. That was Craig from Yorkshire Mesmac speaking to Heidi Victoria from Pride and Hull. And it's an extract of a longer video that you can watch on YouTube from a series relating to Pride in Our City. Now Lauren, I think it's fair now to ask what are some of your memories of Pride and Hull? Unfortunately, I'm not from Hull, <laughs> which we won't hold that against you. <laughs> yeah, people might not be happy about that. I'm, I'm only joking. But I've only attended a few. And unfortunately, a couple of them seem to clash with our events. So the last one that I attended, I had to attend our Festival of Archaeology in the morning and then Pride in Hull in the afternoon. So it was a very busy day. But I'm from Manchester. So my friends came from Manchester and we attended Pride in Hull together. And it was good to, you know, just to sit in in Queen's Gardens where the event was held that year everybody can attend you know it's a family event it's for people to you know come into the city if you identify as LGBTQ plus or not to enjoy this event together to acknowledge that Hull is a very accepting city and it's a very welcoming city it's a city for everybody and I think Pride in Hull is a perfect example of that. There's so much going on and it's not just geared at one part of our community, it's for whole, as a whole. So it's just the atmosphere that I, I remember and I enjoy from the events so that it's just a very comfortable atmosphere. I feel like everybody's welcome and everybody's there just to have a nice fun afternoon and it didn't it didn't hurt that on that day it was 
really sunny and a really nice weather. So that that's always a bonus, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. And in terms of people being so open in sharing their memories, why do you think they were so keen to get involved? I think because, you know, obviously Hull Museums, and it's not just the museums in Hull, but museums as a whole, historically have not shared these stories. They've remained untold for, for whatever reason. And at the moment, we're in a position to tell those stories that have wrongly been left out of our interpretation. And it's not because the stories aren't there. The stories exist. You know, part of this project that we are doing at the moment is to really research into our collections, really look at the, the collections that we hold and the stories that are there. And as we're doing this research, my colleague Elizabeth and I are, you know, finding objects within our collections with amazing stories, with really important stories to be told and really link to the history of Hull in various ways. So links to, you know, our social history, our maritime history, things like that. It's big parts of Hull's heritage. And these stories have gone untold for, like I say, for whatever reason. But I think now people can see that as, as an organisation, as Hull Museums, we're keen to change that. We're keen to ensure that these important and valid stories are told. They have a place to be told. And I think people are just happy to help us do that because people in Hull, uh, communities, you know, not just the LGBTQ plus community, but, but Hull as a city, I think you only have to look at how Hull responded to be in the city of culture in 2017. We had a massive volunteer drive and that was unbelievable. That wasn't anything that I was involved with, but th the amount of people that just got involved on a volunteer basis to support the city, to support projects that were going on, to ensuring that, you know, events are putting on just for people to have a good time. I think it's just part of Hull's fabric that people want to get involved, want to share and want to support everybody. And I think Pride in Our City, again, is a perfect example of that because people are just happy to share and support and it's really great to see. You've actually got some Curator's Choice blogs that are on the Hull Museum's website that looks at objects that can help tell LGBTQ plus stories. What's one of the ones that is most remarkable to you? Like, what's one that has stuck with you as you were doing the research phase for the project? Oh, where, where, where to begin? <laughs> you know, there's so many, I think, but the one that springs to, to mind is Dan Billini. So at the moment, we're looking at acquiring a book that was written by Dan. So Dan was born in 1940 in Hull. He lived in the Hesel Road area of Hull, which if you're from Hull, you, you know where that is. <laughs> People know of Hesel Road. He always wanted to be a writer. He, he trained to be a teacher and then the war began and he signed up and joined the East Yorkshire Regiment. So in the blog, there is a line in there that says, you know, he joined willingly, he volunteered. And this was a, a decision that would, you know, bring him both love and loss. And I think that's quite, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a romantic line, but it's really true because unfortunately in 1942, he ended up getting captured whilst in North Africa and he became a prisoner of war in Italy and while there he met a fellow prisoner called David Dowie and they they got together and they wrote a novel called The Cage. Now like I say Dan had always wanted to be a writer and he had previously wrote a couple of novels, two in particular, A Season of Calm Weather and Living Amongst Boys. They remain unpublished even though he had previously sent them to publishers because they both look at relationships, same-sex relationships between men, and he just couldn't get them published. The Cage doesn't kind of look at that theme, but as he spent more time with David Dowie, he began to fall for him, basically, and he did end up telling him that he was in love with David. Unfortunately, David didn't really respond too well to that, but they had a bit of a tiff, but ultimately they, they kind of talked about it and got back on track. But, you know, this is obviously something that really played on, on Dan's mind because he had wrote in his diary that when he returned to England, it, it, he didn't have a choice. He would have to get married. 
he didn't want to be a, a spinster uh, and he didn't want to upset his family, which is it's really sad. I mean, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but I do do think also in, in one of his previous novels, he talks about, you know, same-sex attraction and, and how that can often lead to people wanting to, to, to end their own life. So he was understanding of the, the situation that he was in and he didn't, you know, feel that he could be perhaps open about that. It's, it's hard to tell, obviously, because he's not here. Because in 1943, when Italy surrendered from the war, Dan fled through the Italian countryside with, with David and, and unfortunately, they, they were never seen again. It's thought that they, they died in the mountains and just, you know, their, their bodies were never found. And in 1944, it, it was officially announced that uh, Dan Billini was presumed dead, you know, and he was only 30 years old, which is, it's really tragic and really sad that it, it's, it's quite a, an interesting and, and really heartbreaking story, really. And I think looking at that within this blog and within our collections is something that's really important and I know it's been explored in other exhibitions around the city because I think Dan is a, is a son of Hull and people have taken him to heart because it was quite a quite a, a hard story to, to, to read and, and, and explore but again a really important one to kind of you know explore the reasons why Dan could, um, couldn't be open about his sexuality at the time and how things have hopefully changed and, and, you know, changing for the better still at the moment. Well, I also think it's the idea of it being an everyday voice. You know, here is a son of Hull and it really emphasises the importance of community contribution to this project. If people are wanting to get involved, I know that you've pulled together a focus group. So how can they get involved? So... We've got lots of exciting things coming up in, in the near future, hopefully. If people want to get involved, they can head over to our website at humbermuseums.com forward slash projects hyphen hull and you will see the Pride in Our City project on there. If you click on there, that brings up all the blogs and there's a page on there that says how to get involved. So you can sign up to our mailing list. That's how we're keeping lots of people kind of updated on what we're doing. So we're sending out emails and opportunities that are coming up. So at the moment, we're actually advertising for a lead creative artist who will come on board to work with the focus group. So the focus group at the moment is currently made up of community groups from around Hull. So again, we've got groups like Yorkshire Mesmac, the Warren, which is a community group in Hull and representation from the university and the Roundheads are all involved as well. And the artist is going to come on board to work with them, to have conversations, to engage, to do workshops, to collect stories and create content to hopefully, uh, touching wood as I say this, develop an exhibition that will be on site but yeah that that's our main focus coming up we're, we're working towards a on-site temporary exhibition at the Ferens Art Gallery so I could say we've already done the Pride in Our City digital exhibition this will be an exhibition that you, you can visit in person can you imagine going to a museum <laughs> for the first time in in how many two, two nearly two years one and a half years a lifetime it's going really to be <laughs> well, it does feel like, like a lifetime. I'm not even sure I know how to get there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully it's going to be very exciting. It's going to pull on our social history collection. So although it's based at the art gallery, it's going to be heavily social history, but hugely community led. So I can't tell you how that exhibition is going to look, what it's going to be involved because because the community groups and the focus groups are the, are, the, are the people that are going to guide us into that exhibition and help us put it all together and, and mould what's going to be in there. So it's a very exciting time really because the exhibition hopefully is not that far away, but we're still, we're still a bit in the dark about what it's going to be and what you can expect from that. But it will be great. It'll be really good and really exciting. So that's the next step for the Pride in Our City project. But although it's a temporary exhibition, it's, it's not, you know, a temporary thing by any stretch of the imagination, the Pride in Our City project is an ongoing project. So we are really committed to addressing the imbalance that exists within our interpretation and our accessible narratives. And the stuff that we learn throughout 
putting this exhibition together will hopefully feed into our understanding of our permanent displays within all our sites, so not just at the Ferens Art Gallery, all of our museums, and hopefully help us influence change and our permanent displays moving forward, <laughs> hopefully. Are there any funders that we need to thank for Pride in Our City? Hull Museums is a NPO, so we're fully funded for this project by Arts Council England. So a huge thank you to Arts Council England. Yes, thank you. So Lauren, to wrap us up, I'd love to just hear from you what this project, Pride in Our City, means to you. Why is it important? It's really important, really, because I remember growing up, going to museums with my friends and, and things like that. And I understand that feeling of walking into a space, a space that, you know, is supposed to be a, a place that tells our story, that holds the stories of our past and walking into it and thinking, my story is not represented here. I'm not included. I'm actively excluded, in fact. So being able to change that for, for other people, for, for young people, for, for, for people my age, or old people, as we're probably now called, <laughs> um, and looking, you know, how that can be made different, even if it's a small change, you know, acknowledging that there's change there that needs to be made, to be able to be involved in that. I remember going to an exhibition once and thinking this is, you know, one of the first exhibitions that I ever saw that looked at the LGBTQ plus narrative of a city and thought this is unbelievable. And, and I went through the feedback book and all the feedback in there was so positive. And I remember thinking this is so unbelievable. How is, you know, I, I would be terrified of what people would say you know negative comments and things like that because that's just the world that we, we we brought up in that we that we were used to at this point and just to see how important that exhibition was to everyone and you know how people were were, were, were saying you know i've come to this exhibition on my own i'm able to you know see myself reflected back within this person's story it was an exhibition about april ashley one of the first people in the world to undergo gender reassignment surgery. And I remember thinking this is just fantastic. And just to be perhaps involved in that for, for our museums to provide that experience for somebody else somehow, even if it's just a tiny bit of that, I think it's really meaningful and it's really important to me. So it's very, very exciting. And I'm very privileged every day to be part of this project and I'm thankful really, yeah. Lauren, this has been a treat. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this has been the Pride in Our City podcast for Hull Museums. You can find us on social media on Twitter as at Hull underscore museums. I've been Dan Vo, and you can find me at at Dan Nouveau. This podcast was produced by me and edited by Samuel Gunn. If you liked what you heard, please do rate, review and subscribe. There are so many more chats coming up that are worth listening out for, so do stay tuned. And look, if you want to get involved, please do find out more about Pride in Our City. There's so many blogs and videos and gorgeous photos of Pride at Hull to have a look on the website. And that's at humbermuseums.com. Search for Pride in Our City or have a look at the links in the show notes. And please, if you've got a story that you'd like to share, do reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. So there we go. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you again very soon. Bye.